The Eagles' pre-season opening loss to Tennessee was a matchup filled with highs, lows and everything in between. There were some players who improved their stock and others not so much, but today we're going to focus on one man who simply blew up against the Titans at Lincoln Financial Field and that man is defensive end Deshaun Hall, a former third round pick of the Carolina Panthers who ended his first preseason outing of 2019 with six tackles, a sack, three tackles for a loss and two quarterback hits, which is not a bad way to make an impression, that's for sure. The Eagles need defensive end depth with the injury to Joe Osman and just how much does this young man bring to the table? It's time to take a look at the eye in the sky. Welcome to another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, make sure you leave a like, hit that subscribe button and of course drop your opinions on today's video down below and let me know which players you want to see me feature in a film room between now and next week's preseason matchup and of course guys, don't forget you can get daily Philadelphia sports content from myself and all of our writers at phillysportsnetwork.com. Deshaun Hall has a very specific prototype. He's a tall, very light, explosive defensive end, someone that relies on his agility and speed to crash the pocket. He reminds me in a lot of ways of Emmanuel Ogba, sort of a baby Ziggy answer, but without that functional strength, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But Hall was originally selected in the third round in the 2017 NFL Draft by the Carolina Panthers, was signed to the Eagles 53-man roster late in 2018. At Texas A&M, he lined up, of course, alongside Miles Garrett and in 52 games had 36 tackles for a loss and 16 sacks along with 24 pressures. So if that doesn't speak to exactly how explosive this man can be, let's take a look at what he did last Thursday. As an out-and-out -out pass rusher, Hall proved himself to be an absolute animal and a lot of that is due to his active hands and just awareness for where the ball is and what's happening around him. He's so technically minded, you see a great example of this forcing Ryan Tannehill out of his comfort zone. If you watch the hand placement here, it's on the outside shoulder of the lineman. He's trying to drive him to the quarterback, realises he can't get there, so tries to rip away under Underneath and is inches away from a strip sack, a Brandon Graham like play, of course, from Super Bowl 52. This time, though, wasn't quite the ending we hoped for. Lining up at right defensive end, he played both spots here. He avoids a chip block and delivers a ferocious quarterback hit. Now, the pass is complete, but the awareness to step aside, square up to the quarterback, keep his momentum moving forward, and make sure he penetrates the backfield and gets the quarterback off balance. If we're talking about awareness, though, this is a rushing play from the Titans, and the second he dissects the chip block, he's straight in to wrap up for a tackle for a loss. But it all comes from that awareness, from keeping his head up. His eyes here strictly in the backfield. He knows that tight end is moving up to take on the second level linebacker. Who angles well, stops, drops and rolls, wraps up around the running back. That's a good play. Even on the Titans' touchdown, it was very nearly a blown up play by number 74, who got great pressure on Ryan Tannehill. Now he actually turns away and takes the check down, but look at this. He gets both hands inside the lineman and he's going to rip down on that outside arm, forcing momentum the opposite way, and then he's just going to drive all his momentum around the outside, run the ring. He gets picked up, luckily, by a second lineman, and Tannehill able to get that pass off, but just great explosiveness from Deshaun Hall, who out of his stance with such active hands is a nightmare. You get another example of that here, straight into the backfield again, almost a safety. Now, the pass does fall incomplete, which is the next best thing, but just watch Hall here again, active hands, constantly puppy pouring his way around, and get gets into the end zone to at least get some pressure onto the quarterback. Now these next two plays happened one after the other and just have to be shown together. The Titans try and run a counter here and Hall gets bowled over by one of the tight ends. That obviously didn't sit too well with number 74 and look at his reaction. The very next play is playing with such a chip on his shoulder. He forces the fumble and comes up and celebrates. Let's slow this one down and look at what went in to such an explosive play. So he's going to come out of a three point stance series in the wide nine alignment. Got to drive. Look at that. The lineman already has no center of gravity. He looks leaner than me. Hall delivering a firm punch into the chest of the lineman. Then drives those hands down again. Tries to swim over the top. That doesn't quite work. But it doesn't matter because he gets to the quarterback and the ball comes out for a forced fumble. I think when you partner that more elusive skill set with someone who's a bit heavier like Josh Sweat who plays with that raw power is when things really get interesting. So if you just want to talk about pure speed, look at this off the line in terms of dissecting, getting back to the quarterback to try and force an incompletion. 
quarterback has to throw it away. But all because of that awareness. It's not just the athletic speed, it's the mental speed, the play processing. Look at this. He knows he's going to have to sift through some traffic here. He shifts himself inside a little bit and already cuts off the chip. Now, at this point, watch the eyes. Because, again, they're constantly looking for the ball. He sees the motion going on. Then, very, very instinctively, gets a hand on the running back. Now, is this a horse collar? Maybe it's debatable. But he does just enough to disrupt the route. That's pure instinct from Hall, who then pressures the quarterback and forces the incompletion. That's some good play right there. Here's another bit of awareness for you as well. The Titans are going to run another counter play here. Deshaun Hall has seen it before and is able to come up with a huge play. But let's slow it down and just watch how quickly he's able to read this. So he's already locked on to number 49. The minute he moves inside, his eyes on the running back, gets behind him and smothers him like a blanket over a fire. But that does bring us on to run defense overall though. And it's something he does struggle with. For instance, in terms of the bench press, he only benched out of the draft 18 reps. That ranks in the 11th percentile. And when it comes to shedding blocks and getting involved in the run game, you often see him get upended here, completely driven out. That doesn't mean he's useless. He comes through and makes a big tackle in this instance. It's a great play. Again, those instincts saving him, but they're not always enough. Like here, he's just held completely outside, stonewalled and pushed to the floor. And it can hurt him as a pass rusher as well when he can't win on just speed. Here's a great example of that. He's going to drive the outside, hand on the chest, and he doesn't get the pressure. What happens? This was a hit that LJ Ford delivered. We'll get to that in another film room, but just watch this play in slow motion and think about what Hall needs to do at this point. He gets a hand on the chest, punches the lineman, and right here, what he needs to do is throw that lineman outside, get in the path of the quarterback. And he tries to do that, but the lineman just stays still. There's nothing Hall can do who comes to a complete halt at that point. So that strength can work against him. And against starters in the NFL, that is going to be a problem, especially in run defense. And this is where I feel like Hall is going to hit his ceiling. As a situational pass rusher who can come off the edge and bring that explosiveness to spice up a drive I think he's got real potential as an edge four guy like you see there that the awareness the mental playing speed and the athleticism all combine for a huge tackle for a loss even at normal speed you can see that he's able to sidestep the block square up to the running back and bring him down all in a split second of judgment but as a run defender I don't think that ceiling is quite as high because you do see situations where he's completely manhandled but what we saw on Thursday night was a player who's explosive, who came off the edge and made an impact for the Eagles at a position where depth is now minimal. Derek Barnett has only just started working out with the ones again and of course Joe Osman's season ending injury has put the spotlight even more so on rookie Sharif Miller and the prized rookie from last year Josh Sweat. Now are those guys going to be able to step up? Do the Eagles need an edge for to come in and really explode off the edge? I feel like Dejon Hall could be that guy but it's that run defense that worries me just a little bit. If we're talking about seeing 20 to 30 percent of snaps in situational blitzing downs and NASCAR packages Hall will be an excellent addition and that may be enough to keep him on the roster but let me know what you think guys drop your comments down in Drop your opinions down below. What do you think of Deshaun Holland? Is he going to make this final 53-man roster? And of course, let me know what players you want to see a film room on very soon. From myself, Liam Jenkins, thank you so much for tuning in today and for all of the support. You can follow me on Twitter at LiamJenkinsPSN. And as always, I'll see you next time.